All right, so let's talk about phlebitis real quick and we'll look at a couple open-ended questions because this is the end of the vascular lecture. I know you thought you were never going to get there. I felt like I'm never going to get there. So um, you probably felt like me too. Um, anyway, thanks for hanging in there with me. Um, so let's talk about phlebitis. So this is a very small topic. I got one slide for it. I got some pictures. Um, but um, effectively what's going on is, is that the small blood vessels, like the superficial vessels, especially you're going to think of, the, you want to think in like the arm and the hand, um, they're going to get irritated and they're usually going to get irritated because there's a device inserted like an IV catheter, or there's an irritating medication. This could be stuff like potassium. Um, some antibiotics can be irritating, Finnergan, anything that you see listed as a vesicant, um, it can be irritating to the, um, uh, the blood vessel. Now it could be irritated from both. It could be like this catheter is irritating me. These medications are irritating me. Um, but effect effectively it's an issue in the superficial blood vessels and it can actually lead to eventually clots and other things. We definitely don't want anything, but it, it mostly we're worried it's just irritation inflammation. Um, and um, uh, we caught patients can um, find it very uncomfortable. They're usually going to say, hey, this is very tender. It's painful. You might notice some swelling around the site. Um, it might be warm to touch, some redness. Um, and um, it's what we're, I'll talk about it in the next slide, but it's what we call streaking. Um, and what we usually do, um, you know, I always want to bring up the point because students get this really confused is with a blood transfusion reaction. If I have a blood transfusion reaction, the, my body is reacting. Um, and a lot of times I'm, you know, um, if I'm like, let's say it's a hemolytic blood transfusion reaction, I'm going to be building up a lot of particles. So I want to flush out those particles. So I always want to maintain my IV for blood transfusions. Because the problem's inside. There's no problem in my blood vessel. There's no problem with my IV. It's the, my body's reacting wrong. But with phlebitis, there's a problem in the blood vessel or with this device. So we need to remove it. So usually what we're gonna do is remove the IV. We're gonna elevate that hand, arm, et cetera. Um, and then to help with pain, we'll give um, anti-inflammatories like NSAIDs and then apply moist heat. And you wanna think about this. If I put ice on this thing, cause you're thinking inflammation, add ice. It's gonna constrict that vessel even worse and make their pain worse and make their problem worse. So we want moist heat is going to usually be most helpful. Now, if there's actually a vesicant that got in and, you know, hurt the tissue, we're always going to follow protocol. Like, you know, if there's, um, you know, times that I've had an infiltrated IV, what I have to do is I have to look at, okay, this med infiltrated, like what, um, you know, or extra extravasated is usually the word we use where it goes into the tissue. Like, what do I need to do? So always be looking into that. Cause sometimes there might be other things you are going to do, but I'm not going to get that. I don't want to get you all too far off track. Just remember phlebitis, um, warmth, elevation, um, remove the IV anti-inflammatories. Hopefully that helps. So here is a picture. Let's see if I can get here. Picture of like, you know, this was obviously an IV that had some phlebitis. And you can see here the streaking here, all of the, um, uh, what do you call it? Inflammation of the veins. And it can really irritate. And it doesn't even have to be just the vein. Like this one on the right, it seems like it's just the where the IV was. These ones, it seems like it really irritated those veins. All right, so we're at the end of the lecture. Um, <laughs> so um, let's read some of these questions. The first one is a nurse is caring for a client with peripheral artery disease. What are my priority assessments that need to be done? So this is something great to do is after you've done a lot of different diseases, go back and try to remember, especially some of the first ones. Um, and so we have some really good reading questions um, at my school, you know, where it kind of takes you through like for different sections, like what are some things you want to know, but these are very similar to those. So perif uh, peripheral artery disease, priority assessments. I want to check for perfusion. So I'm going to do, you know, blood flow, the seven P's and one C. I might check their blood pressure. Um, I'm looking to make sure they're getting flow. Um, we've already talked really in depth about the assessments, but of course for peripheral artery, they can have some de decreased, um, you know, like decreased pulses. They might have pa uh, pallor or they might be pale, especially when we elevate their legs. And I'm not going to give full answers here, but I'm going to just kind of help get you started. Um, you know, they, um, you know, might have a cool temperature to them. They might have some paresthesias and stuff going on. Um, but there would be a sign of a problem if they had did tissue, ulcers on their toes, um, if they started to um, have a decreased, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, I just realized, I don't think I ever went into the C for the seven P's and one C. I didn't, I started, I wrote it down that I need to add it to my PowerPoint, but just in case, if you're stuck through, through this entire lecture, which if you did, I'm so sorry, um, you know, that you have to watch me just know at one point in the future, you will not have to listen to me anymore and you will have more fun things to listen to and maybe hobbies, things like that. It's really cool. Um, I don't have them, but I've heard it's really cool. Let me say, I've heard other people have hobbies and they enjoy them. <laughs> so, um, but C for capillary refill um, is, um, it's all about 
about, um, you know, that like pretty much like when I touch the finger and let go, it should, my color should return back to the color that it was. So it usually turns white because I'm putting pressure. And then you could probably even see it in this video if I put it close enough. Um, you know, it changes color back to, um, uh, what do you call it? It gets its color back, uh, change back, and it should be in less than three seconds is what's normal. So the capillary refill could be getting worse. Um, pulses could be becoming more diminished. Like I said, already ulcers, things like that, but any decline in their um, uh, neurovascular assessment. The second one, a nurse is caring for a client with heart failure. Ooh, I know you haven't learned about it yet, but let's, let's stick with it. Atrial fibrillation. You know what I'm thinking of, of course, they could blood clot. That's the stasis of the blood. Let's see what's happening. One assessment, the nurse notes that the client's extremity is red, swollen, and edematous compared to their left. So I've got unilateral swelling. So I'm thinking blood clot. So what action should be taken? So, um, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure there's nothing compressing or on that. Like if there's an SED, I'll take it off on that side. Um, I'm usually going to, um, you know, probably call the, I'm probably going to call the doctor, get some orders to get some testing to verify that it's a blood clot. Um, they might be starting on anticoagulation. If it's really swollen and, um, edematous, I might elevate it. Um, uh, encouraging hydration. If it's, oh, well, no, oh, oh, that's the trick here. They have heart failure. So I actually don't want to encourage too much hydration because they're already fluid overloaded. Um, but, um, I want to, um, help like the elevation can help. Um, I want to try to get them moving as they tolerate it. Um, and I want to, um, let's see. Oh yeah. So yeah, I just was checking. So remember we, acutely, I don't want to provide any compression on that side, but I'll probably want to make sure on their other leg that they have, um, a, uh, uh, SED or something like that on. They can do some foot pump exercises to help with circulation and stuff too. Um, so diagnostic testing assessment labs, I want to look for signs of clotting, look for signs of bleeding to make sure they're not already having a problem with one or the other of those. Um, I want to um, check like their PTT, INR, um, platelets, hemoglobin, stuff like that. Just kind of overall do like check out how their bleeding clotting situation is going and then um, get that Doppler like I talked about. And then like I said, anticoagulation, they might be on a hep, oh, no, it's a DVT. So they're probably, want, they might be on a heparin drip possibly, um, but we might start them on like heparin, Lovenox, um, and then, um, uh, you know, like the um, sub-Q injections um, and maybe bridge over to warfarin when they go home, especially if they're an AFib, they maybe should already Already beat on anticoagulation, but look at me. I write these questions and I even find ways to make my questions wrong. But yeah, hopefully that helps there. Um, last but not least, varicose veins. What questions do the nurse ask to identify risk factors? So I would ask them, where do you work? What do you do? What's your job like? What are your tasks like? Um, I might ask them, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, if they've uh, had any childbirth in the past. Um, I obviously want to know their age, um, gender, stuff like that, um, to identify some risk factors. I'm trying to think what else smoking, I think was another risk factor. I think those are the big ones. Big ones are like job children. Um, and then some of the non-modifiable ones like age and gender, um, are some of the big ones and, um, yeah. And then treatments, um, you know, for varicose veins, we want to, um, elevate, move, compress. I want to remember, I don't want compression around the waist. I want compression around the legs to help with the flow. I don't want anything to impede, impede the flow. I want to provide comfort to the patient. Um, usually like elevation and rest can help if they're having a lot of symptoms. Um, they can get cosmetic surgeries to, um, fix the look of it, but knowing that it doesn't actually fix the problem, they have to get to the root cause. Um, and then also encourage lifestyle modifications and stuff. So they have less likelihood of, um, having that flow issue, getting flow back to their heart. Anyway, um, I think that gets you started. Hopefully this was helpful to you. I had fun. I hope you did too. And I will see you around for the next time when we talk about coronary artery disease and chronic stable angina. See you there.